Introduction to Kinematics. We'll begin with motion in one dimension, and then some graphical analysis on distance and time, position, displacement, and reference frames, and then the first of the big three kinematics equations. Talk a little about free fall, which is the acceleration due to gravity, displacement versus time, then the second and third kinematics equations, and finally some mixed kinematics problems. Motion in one dimension. We all know what the distance between two objects is, but do we really know what it is? Let's think about it for a second. What is distance? What is length? Think about what you would define that as, but you're not allowed to use the word distance or length in your definition. Hopefully you've just had some discussion on the definition of distance. And unless something really incredible has happened, you've been unable to define distance without using the word interval or distance or length. That's because distance is a fundamental part of nature. It is so fundamental that it's really impossible to define. We all know what it is, but we really can't say what it is. But we can compare dis distances. For example, here's a little sign marker that says Boston is that way, Seoul is this way, about 34 miles, Coney Island's like 7,000 miles this way. So what we're doing is we're coming up with a location, Boston, Seoul, Coney Island, etc., saying which direction it is. We're pointing, okay, because again, it's very hard to define what direction is. And we're giving a, a number value that is comparing the locations of these two objects. And see, it's even hard to say this but we are comparing distances. So we can compare the distance between two objects to the distance between two other objects. On the previous slide we could see how far that marker was from Seoul and we also saw how far it was from Coney Island and several other uh, points of interest. So for convenience and so we can talk to each other and compare distances we will create standard distances. This way everybody who talks about it we can make sense of it and, and come to an agreement how far things are apart. For physics, we will be using meter as our unit for measuring distance. It's been accepted as a universal standard throughout the world so everybody knows what it is. Again, we haven't defined what distance is, but it will allow us to work with it. We'll be using the meter as our standard for measuring distance. This here, this drawing here, is half of a meter stick. You probably have several of these in your classroom. And you can see it has numbers 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Those are centimeters. And there are 100 centimeters in one meter. So this mark here, where you have 20 centimeters, this is 0.2 meters from here to here. So we're going to use a symbol for distance as little d. And the unit for meter is little m. Let's introduce another fundamental term to help us understand motion in one dim dimension. This will be time. Everybody knows what time is, but try defining it again. Take a few minutes, see if you can come up with something. However, you can't use the word time or any equivalent word to time, like hours, seconds, how long it takes, anything like that. Just try it for a few minutes. Like distance, time is a fundamental aspect of nature. It's so fundamental that it's impossible to define, unless somebody in the class came up with something. We all know what it is, but we really can't say what it is. However, like distances, times can be compared, and this is the key point. We can compare different times. Here's how we'll work with time. We're going to say that a person running around this track here at a high school we're going to say that when the person made one lap around the track, the second hand on your watch went around once. So the run took 60 seconds. We're comparing the time between two events. One event is the person running around the track, and the other event is the second hand on the watch going around one complete time. We call that measuring time. We still haven't defined time, but now we're able to work with it. In order to compare time with everybody on the planet, so we're all working with the same units, the second has been defined as the standard for measuring time. The symbol for time is a lowercase t, the unit for a second is lowercase s, 
and here's a second hand on a watch and if it keeps going this way in a clockwise direction by the time it gets to the top this interval this time interval is 10 seconds you can click here for a nice video on how to measure time and distance we're going to define a quantity now that is not a fundamental aspect of nature but is the ratio of two things that are speed we're going to define speed as the distance traveled remember we really can't say what distance is but we can compare it to other distances divided by the time same on that we can't really define time but we can compare it so the distance divided by time we're going to define as speed We'll use S here for speed, D for distance, T for time, and don't confuse this S with the S we have for seconds. Okay, when you see it in this format, that's speed. Again, speed is not a fundamental aspect of nature, but it is a ratio of two things, distance and time, that are. We need units for speed, and the way we're going to do that is take the equation for speed. Here it is, speed is distance over time, we will put in the units for distance, which are meters, units for time, which are seconds, and we're going to say that the unit for speed is meters per second. And we can leave out the ETERS and the rest here on seconds and just put M over S. That's read as meters per second, and that's the unit for speed. In physics and many other disciplines, you will need to find an unknown quantity based on some given information which we'll abbreviate as givens. Here's a good approach. Identify and list the givens and the unknown. Draw and label a diagram of the situation. Select a formula containing the givens and the unknown. Cross out terms that are equal to zero. Then solve the formula so that the unknown is alone on the left side of your equation. Finally, and see it's all the way down here at step six, substitute in the givens with their units. Calculate the value of the unknown, including its units. And finally, box, underline, circle the answer with its units so your work is clearly visible. A car travels 50 meters in 20 seconds. What is its speed? Answer on the next slide. We start by listing the givens. D is 50 meters. T is 20 seconds. We want to find the speed, so we use the speed formula distance over time. Substitute in the given quantities, 50 meters, 20 seconds, carry out the math, and we get 2.5 meters per second. So if this were an exam or a quiz, you would do this. S is equal to 2.5 meters per second, and then you'd put a box around it. Example two, a ball rolled at a speed of three meters per second for two and a half seconds. How far did it travel? So we're given a speed of three meters per second and a time of two and a half seconds, we have to find the distance. So we're going to use the speed formula again, but it's not arranged properly for us. We need to solve for distance. So we multiply both sides by T. T's cancel out on the right, they're left on the left, and then we just flip the equation around so we have distance equals speed times T. Please get in the habit of not putting the numbers in. You probably could have put in an up here and you could have solved the problem, but as we go through physics, the equations get a little trickier. And it's best to do all the algebra first before you actually put the numbers in. So now, finally, substitute for the given quantities. Distance is speed times time. Multiply out. You can see how the units work here. Seconds cancel. And we get 7.5 meters. Example 3. How much time will it take you to travel a distance of 150 meters at a speed of 30 meters per second? We list our givens, distance 150 meters, speed 30 meters per second. Since we want to find time, once again, we have the speed formula, but we need to solve that for time. So we multiply both sides by time, and on the right it cancels out. Then we have S times time is equal to distance, still not there yet, so let's divide both sides by S, the speed, and speed cancels out on the left side, and we wind up with time is distance over speed. Now we substitute in the givens. Distance of 150 meters, speed of 30 meters per second, carry out the math, and we get five seconds. 